I made history. I played an important role in the development of the United States before my monumental quest to find a water route from east to west coast. No one really knew what lay beyond the mighty Mississippi River. Ironically, my early life and childhood prepared me for my destiny. I was President Thomas Jefferson's private secretary before I successfully led the Corps of Discovery with my co-captain William Clark and my Newfoundland dog Seaton. I am Meriwether Lewis. My early life and childhood prepared me for the future. I was born August 18, 1774 to William and Lucy Lewis in Albemarle Marley County, Virginia. I was the middle child out of three. Sadly, my father died of pneumonia in 1779 when I was only five years old. After my father passed away, my mother, who was kind and strong, remarried to Captain J. Marks. We moved to the Georgia Plains in 1782. When I was eight, I often ventured out in the dead of night with my dogs, eagerly hunting for opossums and feisty raccoons. Later, I joined the Virginia Militia in 1794 at the age of 20. During my service, my commander was Captain William Clark. I am grateful for my time in the woods and my military experience. In 1801, my lifelong neighbor, who was the newly elected president at the time, Thomas Jefferson, wrote me asking to be his private secretary. I took the job. In 1802, I and the president conceived a secret plan to send a group of men to the untamed west. Because he appointed me to lead the lofty expedition, I was responsible for purchasing the necessary supplies and recruiting the capable young men, realizing quickly it would be diligent to hire an additional captain in case something were to happen to me on the journey. We agreed William Clark would be the best man for the job. President Jefferson specifically asked me to catalog regional flora and fauna and make new maps of the uncharted west. There are too many things to mention now, so here are my few, few of my favorites. While still in the Missouri, seamen spotted a scurry of gray fluffy squirrels crossing the muddy river, catching 30 to 40 of the little creatures. Mom, that's the word. <laughs> they became our dinner that night. The first winter of our journey, which was late October 1804 to spring 1805, we lodged with the Mandan Indians. While there, it was frequently 20 to 40 degrees below zero. During the winter, I met French trapper Toussaint Charbonneau and his Shoshone wife, Sacagawea. Heavily pregnant, she was soon to give birth. I had the honor, honor of delivering her baby, her newborn son, which we nicknamed Pompey, meaning Little Chief. Sacagawea agreed to join our expedition with her husband and baby to be our interpreter. Along the way, I and Clark cataloged many different animals, such as the grizzly bear, prairie dog, wolves, different kinds of birds, coyotes, elk, and bison. <laughs> I truly wish I had more time to tell you about my incredible journey. I am eternally grateful for that my childhood prepared me for my grueling expedition west and that President Thomas Jefferson wrote me asking to be his private secretary. Without that invitation, I wouldn't be here today. Amazingly, I was able to observe and experience a myriad of new things, such as delivering a baby and consistently discovering undocumented animals and plants. I am most significantly remembered for spearless leading of the Corps of Discovery over extensive uncharted territory which included the ruthless, rugged Rocky Mountains to the Pacific Ocean.